Good morning again, and thank you so much for sharing. That was awesome. Any is remember the movie Groundhog Day? <laughs> Bill Murray, and his name was Phil Connors, and we had Puxatoni Phil the Groundhog, if you remember that. And he relived this same day. The alarm clock would go off at 6 a.m., and it would go off to... I've got you, babe. And then it would come in to, okay, campers, you better get your booties on. It's cold out there. Every day in this, again and again and again and again, this cycle continued as he aimed to get his day right. This morning, we're going to look at the people of Israel in a time period where they were in a cycle of repeat. Continuing again and again. This period in history where they kept doing the same things and God had to keep, had to keep picking them up, dusting them off, setting them up, and they would fall again. Last week we made our way to the end of the book of Joshua. The death of Joshua brought us to the end of the book of Joshua and it brings us into the next book the book of Judges. Judges covers from the death of Joshua until the anointment of King Saul. They kind of go through this period of the judges before they come into a monarchy over the kingdom of Israel. And when you think of this term, judge, it's not like today where we might picture someone judging others or, you know, we look at the news and we might see uh, Nancy or the judge. It's not a judge like that. This is a civil leader over the people. It was a period of about 350 years, and this civil leader was appointed by God over the people to deliver the people. And this word for judge, Shaphat, it means savior or deliverer. And that's what these people were. Under the grace of God, they would raise up the people and bring them out of this time from their enemies, would free them from their enemies, free them from themselves even, and bring them to a period of rest. They were appointed by God to deliver and bring salvation to God's people. Let's go before God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning. And God, we ask that you just... Humble and open our hearts this morning as we go through your word. We ask you to bless us, open our eyes to see that we can draw things from your word that directly affect our lives today and we can do things that bring honor and glory to you. Bless each one here, bless our time together, and it's in the name of your son that we pray. Amen. If you have a Bible, we're starting at Judges chapter 2. Judges chapter 2, and we're going to start at verse 6. After Joshua had dismissed the Israelites, they went to take possession of the land, each of his own inheritance. The people served the Lord throughout the lifetime of Joshua and of the elders who outlived him and who had seen all the great things the Lord had done for Israel. Joshua, son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died at the age of 110, and they buried him in the land of his inheritance at Timonenth Harris in the hill country of Ephraim, north of Mount Gash. This repeats what the end of the book of Joshua tells us about the death of Joshua. After that whole generation had been gathered to their fathers, another generation grew up who knew neither the Lord nor what he had done for Israel. Then the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord and served the Baals. They forsook the Lord, the God of their fathers, who had brought them out of Egypt. They followed and worshipped various gods of the people around them. They provoked the Lord to anger because they forsook him and served Baal in Ashtoreth's. In his anger against Israel, the Lord handed them over to their raiders who plundered them. He sold them to their enemies all around, whom they were no longer able to resist. 
Whenever Israel went out to fight, the hand of the Lord was against them to defeat them, just as he had sworn to them. They were in great distress. Then the Lord raised up judges who saved them out of the hands of these raiders. Yet they would not listen to their judge, but prostituted themselves to other gods and worshipped them. Unlike their fathers, they quickly turned from the way in which their fathers had walked, in the way of, in the way of obedience and the Lord's commands. Whenever the Lord raised up a judge for them, he was with the judge and saved them out of the hands of their enemies as long as the judge lived. For the Lord had compassion on them as they groaned under those who oppressed and afflicted them. But when the judge died, the people returned to their ways even more corrupt than those of their fathers, following other gods and serving and worshiping them. They refused to give up their evil practices and their stubborn ways. Therefore, the Lord was very angry with Israel and said, Because this nation had violated the covenant that I had laid down for their forefathers and has not listened to me, I will no longer drive out before them any of the nations Joshua had left when he died. I will use them to test Israel and see whether they will keep the way of the Lord and walk in it as their forefathers did. The Lord had allowed these nations to remain. He did not drive them out once by giving them into the hands of Joshua. We look through this and this sums up the chapter of Judges. We get that there's this pattern that we're going to see in this period of the Judges. Chapter 3 starts out, it gives a list of the nations that were left behind to test Israel. And the first name of the first judge is Othniel. Chapter 3, verse 6, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. They forgot the Lord, their God, and served the Baals and the Asherahs. The anger of the Lord burned against Israel so that he sold them into the hands of Cushan Rishmahath, king of Aram Nemherah. The king of the Israelites were subject for eight years, but when they cried out to the Lord, he raised up for them a deliverer, Othniel, son of Kenaz, Caleb's younger brother, who saved them. But the Spirit of the Lord came upon them, so he became Israel's judge and went to war. The Lord gave Cushan Rishmahath, king of Aram, into the hands of Othniel, who overpowered them, so the land had peace for 40 years until Othniel, son of Kenaz, died. You can see a pattern starting to develop in this story. This pattern continues through the whole book. We look, Joshua finished. Joshua was a book of victories and of following God. We come into Judges and it's a book of failing and not following God. The people of Israel had forgotten what God had done for them. The pattern sees that we have the God's people and they sin. There's judgment for their sin and punishment. They repent and turn to God. He sends a judge, and then they have a time of peace. And then it starts again. The people sin. There's judgment. They repent. There's a judge and a time of peace. And we see this cycle continuing. Think of it like this. The people were disobedient. God brings them discipline. It causes distress. They get a deliverer. They get deliverance. And this cycle continues, continues, continues the whole way through this book. If we turn right to verse 12, Ehud. Once again, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. Starts out the same way. And because they did the evil, the Lord gave them Elgon, king of Moab, Power over Israel. Getting the Amorites and the Amalekites to join him, Elgon came and attacked Israel, and they took possession of the city of Palms. The Israelites were subject to Elgon, king of Moab, for 18 years. Again, the Israelites cried out to the Lord. He gave them a, de a deliverer, Ehud, a left-handed man, the son of Gera, the Benjamite. The Israelites sent him with a tribute to Elgon, king of Moab. And again, Ehud goes, that's a neat story if you want to read that later, but he goes, delivers the people. He dies, guess what happens? Back to the same cycle. We look at this continuing throughout. As we go through Judges, 
We can see this chapter after chapter. Chapter 6 is the story of Gideon. If you're, if you're familiar with Gideon, Gideon and his 300 men. And if you remember, he went to war against a large army of the Midianites. He was successful. Gideon died. There was a period of rest. And the people went right back to sin. Further on, chapter 13, the story of Samson. If you remember Samson, he was the strong man. Well, strong until Delilah got him talking. Right? He was strong, but then he, was very, he showed his weakness. And God removed that strength from him. But it was Samson who had gone up against the Philistines. Samson died. The people forgot all about what happened. The cycle continued. This period of time really can be summed up in one verse. Judges 17, 6, and it repeats itself in chapter 21, verse 25. In those days, Israel had no king, and everyone did as they saw fit. In those days, Israel had no king, and everyone did as they saw fit. This was after a period of the judges that a king was appointed, which was King Saul. But things did not improve. You see, because an earthly king and an earthly savior were not what the people needed. What they needed was a heavenly king and a heavenly savior. So what can you and I take from a story that's 3,000 years old today? What can we draw from this? Have you ever seen people get into a pattern of sin? Get caught up in sin? Repent? Turn back to God? Come out of that? Maybe a month, maybe a year, maybe a couple later? Right back into things? Maybe even the same sin. Turn back to God. You see, I don't think we are that different than the people of Israel during the time of the judges. Throughout that whole period, the people were not faithful. But out of that whole story, God remained faithful. They continued to turn to God... And it was God who would offer them and give them salvation. But then the cycle of sin continued. So God finally brought about salvation once and for all when he gave his son Jesus as a deliverer and a savior. To deliver people from death and from sin. So when you and I today look at this Old Testament story, it isn't that different from 2018. When it comes to people falling away from God, falling deeper into sin, doing as they see fit, it's not just an Old Testament pattern. I've seen people get caught up many times, and we see that same pattern. They get caught in sin. They have pain. They turn to God. God brings them out. The question is, what's going to happen next? The book of Judges says, In those days, Israel had no king. Everyone did as they saw fit. And you see, because the people did not follow God, they did as they seen was fit. Today, would it be fair to say that because people do not follow God, they do as they see fit? Would, would that be a far stretch in 2018? Because the people do not follow God, they do as they see as fit? I think you and I need to recognize this cycle of sin. We need to recognize it in our life. We need to recognize it in our behaviors. And I believe that if we're going to break this cycle what we need to do is look to what the Hebrew writer gives us. If you want to flip to Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews 
as you're going there, if you think this cycle of sin, we think of sin that it's by God's grace. For all have sinned and fallen short. And we move into this pain and suffering. The repentance. And then being saved out of it. The Hebrew writer says, Therefore, since we, have or, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witness, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. Let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men, so that you will not grow weary or lose heart. In order to break the cycle of sin, we must throw off everything that hinders us. What are the things that entangle you and I? What are the things that we get caught up in or that we allow ourselves to get caught up in? For the people of Israel, those things were idols, sexual immorality, denying God, ignoring God. Are these things that you can see in your life today? Are there things that you worship or that you put before God? Are there secret sins that you need to confess and repent to? Have you been ignoring God and His call on your life? You see, I don't think the people of Israel are that different than the people today. But we can learn from this history and we can break that cycle of sin and throw off what hinders us when we repent and confess and turn to God. But once we do that, we need to do the next step and that enables us to run with perseverance. What does it mean to run with perseverance? I think it's to live a life that brings honor and glory to God without being held back by the things of the world. To be urgent and specific in all that we do. The people of Israel kept repeating the cycle and not learning from their mistakes. Sin can hold you and I as well. It slowly creeps in, ever so slowly, and gets a hold of us. My good friend and mentor, Greg, explained it this way. He said, sin can bind you, it can grind you, and it can blind you. Think of that. It can bind you. Sin can hold you captive. It can grind you. It will cause pain. And it can blind you. I know many people I've talked with who found themselves deep in sin and they're like, I have no clue how that happened. They were blinded to it. It just crept in ever so slowly. Sin can bind you, grind you, and blind you. So what we need to do is run with perseverance and be aware of sin and the temptation. What are the things that can lead you and I down that wrong path? Be aware of those things. Put safeguards in place so that you're not blinded by sin. Be mindful of things like addictions, sexual sin, Gossip, greed, you can name them. Be mindful of them. Put safeguards in place so that sin doesn't creep in. Are there things in your life that you need to be aware of to make your life one that brings honor and glory to God? 
and so that you can run with perseverance. And you see, when we run with perseverance, we also have to know where we're going. And the Hebrew writer says we need to fix our eyes on Jesus. Fix our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. You see, the people of Israel did as they saw was fit because they had no king. You and I have a king, and that king is Jesus. He came, he lived, and he died so that you and I can live. He came as the deliverer for those who would choose him. And he came to break that cycle of sin. The people of Israel kept falling away from God, and yet God was and is faithful. And he's faithful still to you and I today. He sent his son to give you and I victory. Victory over the sin in our life and victory over death with a promise of life eternal. God does not want for you and I to live a life like that character, Phil Connors, in Groundhog Day. A life of just repeating the same thing with a hope of the same thing getting better. We're to break that cycle. Do not be like the people of Israel during the time of the judges who continued in their cycle of sin and again and again God had to come and pick them up. This morning, break the cycle of sin that's holding you back. Lead a life that brings honor and glory to God and let all things that you do point back to Him. Throw off everything that hinders and entangles you. Run with perseverance the race that's marked for you and fix your eyes on Jesus. And when we do that, our story will be different. It'll be that in those days, the people had a king. His name was Jesus. And everyone endeavored to do that which was right and fit. Let's go before God. Heavenly Father, as we come to a close this morning, God, you know our heart. You know our hurts and our hang-ups. And God, I just ask that if there's someone who's struggling with something today, that you give them the courage and strength to reach out, to repent, to confess, and to turn things to you. God, I ask a blessing on those who are here. I ask a blessing on those who are joining us online and a blessing on our week before us. God, we give you praise and thanks for this day. We thank you that we can gather on a Sunday morning and worship you and give praise to you. We lay all this before you and give you thanks, and it's in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, that we pray. Amen.